we just thought we'd start with a, a brief introduction to the team and our relationship to AMBIT so far. So, um, like Dickens said, we're AMAS, which stands for the Adolescent Multi-Agency Specialist Service, and we're based in Islington in North London. Um, and we work with young people who are aged between 10 and 16 who are edge of care. Um, so a typical referral is a young person with conduct disorder type presentations, not attending school, antisocial behaviour in the community, violent and aggressive behaviour in the home. Um, and the intervention that we offer families is, um, it's intensive, it's twice a week visits, it's uh, outreach based and it's, um, it's a whole family approach and it's systemic. Um, and, and our kind of primary objective, uh, outcome objective, is to improve family functioning enough to enable the young person to remain living at home. Um, so we, we're based within um, children's social, we're based within and funded by children's social care and we work in partnership with Islington CAMS. We've got seven practitioners in our team and I'm including myself and Heather in that. I'm a social worker and Heather is a clinical psychologist. Um, so we're, we're quite a small team or we're, we're, we're a very small team and we exist within a, a very large complex and, and sometimes quite inflexible organisation and I think that one of the challenges for us um, in terms of our, our ambit practice has been um, I guess when we when we tried to take it outside of our cosy little ambit team into the wider organisation and we, we feel sometimes we don't get very far before we meet some resistance. However, we've also reflected as a team that, that being a small team, that's been really helpful in terms of being able to create this, this shared culture, this common language based around the AMBIT principles. We, the, there are some aspects of the approach that are, we've, um, that are really fully embedded in our day-to-day -day work. We use a um, thinking together inspired framework for our case discussions in group supervision every week. Um, and another thing is I think we've got we've become really good actually at when, when we see barriers within the professional network or perceived barriers in the professional network at supporting each other in a, in a sort of active and explicit way to try and understand the other point of view of, of, of the other worker or the other agency. We've, we've, I think we've got really quite good at that sort of within group supervision again or sort of in general case discussions. I think it's fair to say actually that one of the areas that we'd, we were kind of slow to fully embrace was this uh, wiki manualisation. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's quite brave that we decided to uh, talk about it today. <laughs> um, and, and I think initially there was quite a lot of confusion about what this wiki thing was and we didn't quite understand its relevance to our um, our day-to-day -day work. And there was probably also a bit of a fear about the technology. Um, that was possibly just me, actually. <laughs> um, but in the last sort of 12 to 18 months, I think we've come a really long way in terms of understanding how beneficial it can be to the team. Um, and one of the things that's been really, really helpful is that we have a, an assistant psychologist in the team called Jo, and uh, she's just been very enthusiastic about, about uh, doing this and uh, has been very patiently coaxing us all along to uh, take a bit more of an active interest in it. Um, she's kind of become the sort of unofficial wiki champion in the team and that, that role has been, been really, really helpful. Um, she's on leave today, she's not here, which is a real shame, uh, mainly because if she was here, she'd be up here doing this instead of me. <laughs> um, so I'm going to hand over to Heather now, who's going to take us through um, a, an example of how the team have used the, the, the manual. As you saw, our presentation is about manualising a live issue, and I want to just give you a bit of context to this issue. 
um, partly what it was and how it came about, just to kind of locate you and what, what we've been doing. So as Gary said, the type of referrals that we usually got through were very frequently conduct disorder type presentation. And what we really noticed in our sort of referrals meetings over the last little while is that there's been a real shift in the types of referrals and some of the presenting difficulties that referrals have put on our form started to include more of this language of oh, young person at risk of sexual exploitation or could be at risk. That was coming up quite a lot and we started getting really curious about what, what are we seeing here, what is this about? This feels a bit different, there's something going on here and we're really not sure what it is. And it also raised questions for us, so on the one hand we were sort of thinking well people are obviously seeing that our team has been working with some cases, some difficult presentations that include risks of sexual exploitation. But actually, does this fit with our model? Are we the right team for this? Does what we do best match this kind of difficulty? And it sort of left people starting to feel a little bit de-skilled actually in the work that they were doing. And we had a little bit of a think about why, why are we getting these referrals and, and for example, <coughs> One referral that the team worked with some time ago was a 14-year-old girl. It was clear that there was exploitation going on. And by that we're meaning the kind of classic sexual exploitation in exchange for something in return of that young person by an older male in her life. And you know the team had to do lots and lots of work with the police concurrently to try and really work out how they could best support this family. And reduce this. But lots of the referrals we were seeing were people just identifying risks and we weren't really sure what that was, who means what, are we looking at sexual exploitation or is it something we're not quite sure. So we really sort of started thinking and we really wanted to take a team learning perspective to it. So what we did was think about how the ambit wheel could help us do that. So we broke off into a smaller working group. It's probably quite small on your screens, but it's now very familiar ambit wheel. We know that a lot of our work that we're already doing, and, and that's kind of why it's a live issue, because we're having to kind of do our work as usual alongside trying to make sense of all this other presenting difficulties. We're sort of at the active planning stage a lot of the time, the clinical governance, the risk strategies, safety plans scaffolding existing relationships, that's kind of the core of what we do. But we realised that for thinking about this particular issue, we were going to need to go to the wiki manualisation stance and the respect for local evidence and practice and respect for evidence-based practice. So in our group we looked at that and what it really helped us do was identify the key areas that we might need to think about in order to help ourselves make sense of this and to take us forward. And that included thinking about, well, is it just, you know, in its box, sexual exploitation? Or does this kind of touch on all sorts of range of issues that we're a bit familiar with? So, for example, thinking about how this might connect with work that we've previously done where young people have been involved in gang relationships. Or thinking about... Um, where there might be other sorts of presenting issues similar to substance misuse or young people offending and staying out late and, and where does it intersect and what are the areas we might need to look into and find out about. And then it also helps us organise our thinking about, well, okay, respect for local practice. We've got some of that coming back towards us, but what, what's going on in our local service? Who might we need to speak to? Who's already doing something? Is anyone else doing anything? So we're starting to kind of map out, well, who might we be able to talk to? How could we find out? What's in the research literature? Is there a psychological perspective we can look at to help us make sense of this? So we're starting to build up a bit of a parallel set of plans to think about, OK, these, these are some of the things that we want to do. And it was all kind of linking back to that wiki manualisation and how are we going to learn about this as a team? How are we going to take ourselves forward? So what we really wanted to do is break it down in terms of the process of, of how we went about this and some of the things that we've already done. We started 
by bringing that whole set of ideas back to our team meeting and having a bit of a discussion about it. This is the plan. These are the ideas. Do we know what's about? Do we know what the research is? And, and for example, we, we really didn't know whether there was much research, so we had to go and look at local policies, nice guidelines for safeguarding, uh, nat other national sorts of policies, and really kind of spend a bit of time thinking about, well, who else might know about this? What are the names? Oh, there's that new person in the service. And making a list of where, where can we go, who are all the people that we can speak to. And then working out who's going to do that, who's going to do what. What I'll show you in a minute is how we captured a lot of these discussions onto the wiki. So to give you, give you an idea, we, we had whole team discussions. So somebody might have gone off and done an interview or a meeting with clinical lead or a local service lead around these kinds of presenting issues and then found a way to either get that back onto the wiki themselves or bring it back to the team meeting. We had some more formal facilitated discussions taking the format of a reflecting team which some of you might be familiar with. We had less formal discussions in a team meeting which were a bit facilitated but kind of just creative and jotting things down. I think for us, as, as Gary said earlier, we really weren't quite sure about this and it felt like, oh, we've, we've got to get the right page, we've got to make sure that what we've said is going out there onto the web, you know, other people can see our work. But actually just really, really lowering the threshold and that and saying, okay, we've, we've got 10 minutes before we've got to go to our next meeting. Uh, Celia or Pam, I know that you've been off and talked to someone, so let, let's just get top 10 things down that they said, let's just jot it down right now and then you know we can always go back and edit it later. So we had those sorts of ad hoc informal discussions as well. We made a start on contacting local organisations and each organisation we contacted, so Bernardo's for example, they also might have known of, oh we've been looking at this paper, we've done that work, why don't you try contacting so and so. So off we went to make a contact with so-and-so, really kind of trying to bring that back into, okay, this is where we've got to, what's next? Interestingly, when we started doing some of the researching using search engines, there was quite a bit about young people, I mean, that, that's one of the key people that we work with, but our team also works very, very closely with the parents, and, and what we struggled with was finding research and work around how you work with parents, how do you support parents where this is either happening to their young person or people are concerned that it could happen, what do you do, what can help us and actually there's, there wasn't really very much at all and I'm sure there is maybe out there but so far what we've found is very little so that was kind of a key thing for us. And what we also tried to do as well was sort of almost manualise the process of us manualising it. So we're both manualising the content of what we found. We're also sort of trying to capture how we went about doing it so that we could share that with each other and, and, and you guys as well. And we have a bit of a video, and I'm really happy this is going to work. Um, oh, actually, maybe I'll show you some of the wiki pages first, actually, so that you can see. An example of in a nutshell where we just kind of type down what's our rationale for this, where are we starting from, as I explained. So it's just a very quick example what to do first, where do we go, relevant research areas. And as Gary said before, our assistant psychologist Joe has been absolutely instrumental in kind of kicking us a bit and getting us to do some of this and starting it off and then saying, Look what I've done, can you edit it? Mm -hmm. We've got some conversations about outreach work. And under each of these, what we try to do every time we come up with a new page or a new idea that comes out of one of these pages, if I click here, it sort of shows you the other things that it's linked to. So Safer Choices Project Worker, that's an interview that 
somebody did and kind of put back onto the wiki. Young People's Advocate, that's another interview or in a meeting that somebody had. So you can see that it's really starting to build up the kind of connections about who's done what and, and make it actually quite a lot of, uh, a lot of information. Again, this is just kind of mapping out. This is one of the areas we've been looking at. And there's all sorts. And, you know, we've started a pair one, which I'm still a bit shy to show you because it hasn't been edited yet, so it's still that kind of brainstorming conversation. Bits written down. And then I wanted to just show you the example of how we documented one of the ways that we learn, just in terms of process. And this was done, this is on something different, but we've linked it to this because this is a formal reflecting team and we kind of mapped out how we did the reflecting team and then we connected that to where we've had some of the discussions. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a flavour. Um, okay, so we've noticed in our allocation meetings that we're getting an awful lot of referrals, um, particularly for like, young women, which is a bit unusual compared to how Anna used to get their referrals. Um, and I guess what we've all sort of talked about is that one of the things on the referral form is lots of worries about possible risk, etc.